I'll be talking about refactoring and exactly even dream refactoring. So my name is Yuri and I have been working with PHP for almost eight years. Uh, and all the time I'm working with legacy code, quite, I guess, obvious. Uh, I have applied different approaches of refactoring. I was designing my bicycles and I was adapting well-known techniques. Um, some companies uh, are mature enough to spend uh, resources on a global refactoring, but in most cases, uh, they are not. All the time I was improving my soft skills to sell refactoring to business uh, and hard skills to refactor safer, faster, and be able to estimate. The approach I'm about to share is a result of that experience. So after a while, I subconsciously began to avoid using sub some stop words uh, like refactoring, uh, test coverage, and technical depth in any business conversation. And I believe it's right uh, because the quality of the solution, the quality of the code uh, are the, the responsibility of technical specialists. Stop words should be converted into metrics um, that the business understands and problems into solutions that allow the business to grow. So why refactoring is a stop word? Because it is risky, because there is no clear bounds of work to be done, and because it doesn't introduce any feature to help business. My proposal is use events as piles, the basement for a new features to refactor. Doesn't matter how much mud do you have underneath if your building is not touching it. Uh, here's some books, uh, resources and people that inspired me. Uh, Eric Evans, Martin Fowler, Juan Vernon and uh, Alberto Brandolini. I would like to add David West here, but he is not directly related to the current presentation. Uh, the presentation is split into two parts. The first one is uh, theoretical. Mm, it should be understandable for a bit wider auditory, including non-technical people. Uh, but the second one uh, is supposed to be interesting to engineers. So we'll start from definitions, at least how business see them. Refactoring for business is something risky, time consuming, and it doesn't bring any business value. Legacy, it kind of sounds too often in any project, so it have lost any sense for business. Uh, definition of event or of even driven is quite wide and it is really hard to explain even to developers. So I'll try to add a bit clarity here. So refactoring uh, is the process of decreasing of the code complexity. It's decoupling and the responsibility segregation. For business, I guess it's still quite pointless. Uh, but what is the legacy? Why it is bad? Because much more time is needed to design and deliver new features. It is much risky to apply any changes to the legacy code. Uh, even bug fix can break the system because its behavior has was based uh, on the top of that bug. And bug have become a business rule. Uh, experienced developers are suffering working with it. Uh, the onboarding of newcomers is taking more time and it is much harder to hire new engineers. So refactoring has to solve that stuff. We need just to find the proper tool which will be predictable and won't consume too much time. So the tool is event, the basement of the proposed refactoring. Event is atomic, already happened, business valuable fact. So we'll apply, we'll introduce one more event-driven approach. What is even driven approach? Uh, well, even for Martin Fowler, it was not so clear and he spent a while to design the proper definition. It is quite complex. 
but the absence is only one. Any approach which is based on events, on usage of events, could be called as event-driven approach. So the legacy. Um, here some schematical view of quite well-designed project. It is not too bad, but this is the main issue. It is not so obvious that it has to be refactored, but in one year it may become too complex to simply refactor. Uh, the highlighted part is business rules, the only interesting for business stuff. But developers are working a lot with all application layers, which are described here. They could be not so specified, uh, but uh, there is some infrastructure logic, some framework or application logic there, and the place for business rules where they're supposed to be the main layer. And as we see uh, that business rules uh, has intersections with all layers, thus any change of the project could break the system. It is risky to apply any changes. And in some time, maybe years, maybe months, uh, our project can start looking like that, like big ball of mud. And how to get deal with such complex issue, how to refactor such complex project, how to sell refactoring to business and get profit. Um, here what uh, Martin Fowler proposing to do. Uh, he is proposing to detect bounds of business processes. Then intercept uh, updates of the legacy system. Ideally, it will be events. Then he is proposing to build to a new approach to build a new system around the legacy system. And after a few years, you could get rid of the legacy system. So it is needed a few years to achieve such goal using such approach. Well, it is really great. Uh, it is guarantees a result, but we have <laughs> a big ball of mud and we don't have any events. And yeah, we are introducing the same stop words to business. Unpredictable refactoring, uh, hard test coverage, and unlimited amount of tech debt which has to be solved and cannot be properly estimated. Uh, I'm proposing to adapt that approach and restructurize it a bit to have the profit as a main goal, but not the refactoring itself. Apply modern techniques to speed up proposed solution and got profit as a side effect. So I am proposing to use even storming to visualize uh, business process bounds. And as a result, we will have up-to-date documentation for newcomers, for sharing with business, for planning. Uh, I'm proposing to start just dispatching domain events from legacy code without its changes. And we can skip that long time process and already get profit, already build testing, logging, monitoring, and business analytic tools on the top of dispatched events. And that's it, we can get profit and we don't need to wait too much time. But how to achieve such ambitious results uh, faster than it was described by Martin Fowler? Uh, the first step we can speed up using even storming 
by Alberto Brandolini. Uh, this is the approach uh, which allows uh, squeeze into a few hours work, which usually took before for a few weeks or even months. So what is the purpose of the event storming? Mm. This is a description from the official site, official resource. But I want to highlight only the main one. The event storming is the tool to design or describe existing system using business facts. This is cross-descriptive tool. Simultaneous work of product people and engineers is not only possible, but even required. And it is remote friendly. It is simple enough to adapt any tool from simple image redactor or special tools like Draw.io or Miro, or use just stickers and board in a physical way. So that approach is uh, really good described uh, by Von Vernon in his uh, Domain Dream Design Distilled book. I won't explain everything. You can just read uh, resources. I just want to give you the start point, starting point. You don't need to do it properly. You don't need to do it in a perfect way. You just need to start doing that. So the main definition here, like, of course, event. Event could be caused or should be caused by a command. And it will be in the frames of some business process, business model. Uh, there is some possibility that uh, on event will be some reaction. And uh, it is needed to show some external systems. Uh, it, could, it could be some internal microservice or like third party. Some questionable parts uh, will be marked as hotspots. So starting doing that and the first step we need to put events on the board, keeping the timeline. In our case, it will be order process description, order life cycle. So just three events, order created, order canceled, and order shipped. Mm, order canceled and order shipped uh, could happen kind of in one time. That is why they're under each other and they cannot happen before order created. The second step will be introduce commons right before events. Because events has to be caused by some execution of some commons. So the third step will be to set the context bounds. For developers, it will be domain model. But we don't need to use uh, domain driven design uh, terms, just mark and just limit uh, business bounds. Uh, we could have some questionable parts and do not to do not stop. Uh, at that point, we just mark in some questionable parts by hotspots or by red stickers. And do not hesitate if you are using some not physical board or even with physical board, you can use emoji to highlight some parts of the process or set that actually here the process is finished and this is a happy path. Mm, if our event is causing some additional command, for instance, we want to notify user, we are just adding one more command, which was caused by event. Obviously, that command has to be executed and in our case, it will be executed by external service. It will be a notification service. Uh, there is one more sticker which calls a policy or reaction. It kind of if then sticker, which uh, shows that that command was caused by event. So event is causes one more process. And that's it. We don't need to use more details at the very beginning. We just need to start. You can use already uh, described uh, shared Myra 
it is remote friendly and it is really like interesting tool to start it is not needed a lot of investigation just to put stickers there uh, but you need to follow some rules if you want to use diagrams uh, in a more efficient way you shouldn't duplicate diagrams describe the same process you may create temporary diagrams uh, including some additional details of infrastructure and keep them for history uh, but you cannot keep more than one diagram up to date two diagrams uh, won't be up to date for a long period of time and when you are designing the process it should be ideal process a process which you want to receive in the end uh, all the differences you may mark by hotspots or red stickers so the part the practical part it's even dispatching uh, the approach is tool and language agnostic however if we wanna uh, share some practical experience I need to add more detailed explanation. I will be using PHP and Symfony as a framework. Uh, currently, I'm using MongoDB, but uh, it won't be here mentioned somehow. And uh, different message brokers uh, still, um, this is depends on your company needs. So Kafka and SQS are in use currently and there is no strict requirements and at the beginning. So going back to our big ball of mud. Uh, we don't change uh, legacy code. Our goal is to dispatch events, but not refactor or change the behavior. However, we can add some follow-up tasks uh, and implement some changes later in separate um, process. Uh, we are using PSR in dispatcher interface to receive more flexibility. We can apply already existing libraries. Uh, we can safely wrap it uh, with some decorators and we will be using decorators a lot. Uh, and we need to save store events. And if we are not, in, not using Kafka, we need to add persistence. And persist persistence shouldn't happen from the legacy code, but aside. And for that, we'll be using either event listener, but I am recommending to use even de dispatcher decorator to be sure that uh, event will be stored and only then processed. So after we added events, dispatched all needed events from the legacy code, we'll have the legacy project under the refactored project mask. Our planning was quite predictable. We spent not a lot of time. Our changes were safe as they didn't change any behavior, but we already can start getting profit from the current project. So the profit will be in logging, monitoring, and alerting. For that, uh, I'll be using Monolog library, PHP, and its integration with Symfony. Uh, plugin uh, will be using uh, Elastic Log Stage and Kibana, ELK stack. And alerting will be based on a last alert. So we need to design the basic rules. Uh, we have to limit rules amount to do not support a lot of them to simplify following to them. They should be flexible enough, so quite abstract. And they should be logical, so it shouldn't be hard to recollect them. So the first rule, all business facts, fact representations should be as equal as possible. Our even storming 
representation should be equal to PHP representation and uh, PHP context of event has to be the same as context of log message. Of course, we can extend them, mutate them somehow, but we should keep the aligned as possible. And some basic principles of exact code implementation. Every event and even wider definition message, which includes commands, queries, requests, etc., has to contain its full identity, all parent model identifiers. Uh, what I mean, I mean that to reliably support, we need to design contracts and our message has to implement um, several interfaces. It will be basic message interface, which will protect message behavior in our event. Domain event interface to split domain events from application events, keep domain event behavior separately. And uh, ID aware interfaces to support IDs chain. Every aware interface may be supported by aware trait to do not duplicate the code. Uh, let's see the agenda to the next slides of interfaces structure. We'll be using interfaces, subtract classes, traits, and objects. Our event has to implement basic message interface as a first interface, but we need to add more details. For shop created event, we need to add shop ID aware interface and add more clarity, more details with shop message interface. It will specify basic shop message behavior. Domain event interface to split uh, domain and application events, and maybe some other interface which you will decide to add. And finally, the closest to the event object, uh, the shop event interface. Uh, for subdomain order created event, uh, we need to repeat the same interfaces structure. Uh, application events such as exceptions, and I am considering exceptions as events, thus, if, thus messages uh, should still extend message the basic message interface, own application event interface, and already described uh, interfaces from the domain, from the business process context. So if exception belongs to order, it has to extend, implement all chain of order message related interfaces. Messages should be normalizable it should be possible to convert them into arrays of scalar values in a safe and efficient way. Uh, there is a lot of tools to do that. So I'll describe just the main groups of them. So ubiquitous languages. In our case, it may be Symfony Serializer. Uh, it could be own internal one library. Mm. I created my own. Uh, all libraries usually are less flexible, but uh, much more efficient than external libraries with wide functionality. And of course, you can just design something internal inside your project, just method to array. If you are doing it in your own, you should keep in mind that Resources are quite uh, unsafe in normalization. Uh, you should protect yourself from circular references um, as well as keeping protected user personal data or some authentication data. Uh, 
messages, login messages uh, could be limited in a size. Uh, if you are using finger crossed lo login approach, uh, you should keep in mind that it could cause some memory leaks, especially in long running workers. And if you have quite complex messages, uh, you can have some performance issues so with uh, indexes. Uh, the truly stable logging and monitoring could be based on the top of the limited list of mandatory fields. Uh, the correlation ID um, is kind of basic and ubiquitous practice which allows cross process and cross application tracing. Here is some not ideal but real implementation of uh, object singleton to encapsulate logic of uh, correlation ID generation and its resetting. Uh, in my case, it was needed uh, because of bulk operations. I'm considering any separate operation uh, caused by bulk call as a separate business process. Uh, and this is a symphony listener, which is uh, either gets correlation ID from the request or generates it. The correlation ID should be set to all responses as well. Uh, and if you are using Gazelle library, you may use some middlewares to achieve that. So different practices could be applied here. And the third and the last one principle for implementation uh, this is uh, mandatory message fields and uh, correct context type. This is not monologue field, but uh, this is message context field. It should be added during the normalization and it has to be equal or it may to be equal, but I'm proposing to make it equal to the short class name, as well as all IDs uh, and other message context. I believe that proper domain message should bear enough information to reconstitute the model, even if you are not implementing even sourcing. Uh, so I guess uh, the fastest way to get the short class name is getting it by using some string functions. So this is an example of kind of object-oriented implementation of such functionality. Mm, you might use reflection or any, or you can just get the full class name, but it is quite hard to operate with it. Uh, this is an example of the normalized event, which contains type, IDs chain, and some additional event context. Um, the next field uh, is a basic monologue field. Uh, usually only three or four values uh, of it are in use, but it has much more shades. Uh, using it, we can split uh, fails uh, from some info kind usual domain messages and it will make easy building some other thing on the top of the basic definitions the third of, or the third no fourth <laughs> first channel uh, e and channel is still basic uh, monologue field uh, I'm proposing to split it as much as possible and uh, I'm not using basic application channel, uh, but uh, splitting it into um, HTTP, maybe asynchronous messenger um, and the domain events. And I'm splitting domain events by some aggregate root or subdomains. Uh, so the navigation, the bug, support and documentation will be much simpler and will be flexible and stable simultaneously. 
following such basic principles. And then we are going to implementation of the login. Uh, login has some possibilities for automation. Uh, we can automate log message segregation by interfaces to improve the filtering. Uh, it is simple enough, uh, but given impressive results, uh, we may use decorator to add uh, application events uh, to bear infrastructure related information. So, login level. Having the basic interface structure, we need to support it uh, without any code duplication. So each aware interface supported by aware thread, uh, as it should be applicable to classes without common parent. Uh, this is uh, correct for any direct message interface implementation. More detailed interfaces uh, may be supported by abstract classes. Uh, detailed interfaces like order event interfaces uh, could be added by demand and uh, do not hesitate to add domain interfaces uh, if they are used only for logging. Of course, common sense uh, should be present here. Uh, that victim uh, was approved by uh, Eric Evans when he confirmed that it is easier to keep domain light with a persistence layer uh, when it's possible as it uh, simplifies a lot. You shouldn't uh, support that difference. Uh, so logging uh, should uh, happen either in listener or even dispatcher decorator. I'm proposing to keep uh, equality between logger and uh, listener method names. Uh, so we want to mix stuff. Uh, and then Symphony's config will look like that one. The main fail event uh, will have error log level, which will replace default info level. Application fail event, uh, fail HTTP client event uh, will have error level, replacing the default debug level. And after application event, will force the info level instead of debug. Uh, diving deeper into Symfony framework, uh, this is how to mark events by tag, special tags, uh, to be able to protect them automatically. The first change has to be applied to the kernel. We are setting tags uh, to events with a special interface. The next change uh, in the compiler pass to set the proper logging level based on message interface. Actually, it will be applied on the top of tags, uh, which were set in the kernel. If we are talking about framework agnostic approach, it will be much more flexible, but obviously much more simpler, but less flexible. Uh, usual switch case uh, or for happy ones who is using PHP 8, uh, much language construction. So logging channel uh, based on result of instance of comparison, the next automation. Using simple switch case, we can set channel to some groups uh, that are implementing the same interfaces. Now it is more understandable why the proper structure of interfaces is quite important. Uh, we are using interfaces to segregate messages by their behavior, but we are flexible enough to split using event class name as well or other, uh, uh, other more complex, thus not recommended ways of segregation. If you uh, haven't used any centralized uh, processors like Command Bus, uh, Symphony Messenger, or any implementation of PSR client interface, such as Kazel library to make HTTP calls, then you can easily apply event decorators on the top of them. 
So you can decorate uh, top level interfaces uh, with decorator, which will dispatch application events. Mm, I want to introduce after and fail application events uh, for HTTP calls. So we need uh, decorator event implementation, which could be supported uh, by abstract decorator event class, abstract class, and the creator itself. Mm. So the creator will dispatch after type event. Uh, and it will include all needed context, so request and response. Uh, or failed event uh, with its context uh, on any fail. Um, it's obviously request and exception. You may extend the context with the client config details. Sometimes it's quite valuable. Um, this is quite usual try catch construction. Um, this is the uh, abstract decorator event implementation using my uh, library. So here you see the adapter uh, for request, normalizable adapter. It encapsulates uh, already described uh, functionality of uh, hidden the uh, secure, secure data authentication headers. Uh, and this is an example of custom type field generation for decorated, event, decorated events. Mm -hmm. It will contain the wrapped event, short class name, and concatenated uh, decorator event short class name to be able to split them uh, in uh, Kibana dashboards. All fields from the wrapped event uh, will be moved to the root of the normalized event to apply the same filters. Uh, to, nested, uh, to use nested structure, you have to increase the complexity of dashboards and you will lose that uh, reusability of filters. Uh, we have basic fields uh, on the right places then. And uh, we'll get them from wrapped objects. It could be events, comments, or requests. Having that automation implemented and uh, following the basic rules, which are actually best object-oriented practices, I mean interfaces uh, structure, we can start receiving the profit from any added event and refactor it process without additional effort. You can just dispatch event and everything will be done automatically. Uh, and the next uh, profit, which follows from logging, is monitoring, which will be built on the top of uh, Kibana. Kibana is giving really flexible tools, but it is needed to investigate a lot to use them more efficient. I'll briefly show how to build its uh, infrastructure on the top of even based logging. So I'm using tags a lot. Uh, they will help with navigation, support and promotion. Tags are applicable to any entity, dashboards, uh, filters and visualizations. You can use uh, team name, uh, text, environment text, uh, text uh, with uh, dashboard purpose, is it alert, uh, special business process, or you can mark some old uh, dashboards as deprecated ones to allow safely migrate for your users, for your dashboard users. So searches. Mm, this is how minimalistic search could look like. Here you see the basic fields already described. Uh, type, which is short class name, IDs chain, shop ID and subdomain ID, order ID, uh, correlation ID, um, channel, this is domain event, thus this is domain order channel, and uh, its level, its info level, uh, which was set by default because this is domain interface implementation. 
uh, short field names uh, this is some trick which will i i will describe and uh, you can see that correlation id is a link so by clicking on it you will be redirected to the special search with applied filter by that correlation id and some additional fields uh, additional fields filters so how to achieve that uh, some short instructions so you need to follow to stack management in index patterns choose your index pattern choose your field edit it and then you can set the custom label to use short class name to apply a link to it uh, it is needed to set field uh, format to URL and type to link and then it is needed to change uh, the template link template um, the highlighted parts are time filter uh, required column to be present on that search uh, prepared search ID so this is not some random search but already configured and the last one the value of the correlation id which will be taken from the table uh, filters uh, filter is kind of quite new component in kibana ideally filter should be related either to the basic message field or to the basic domain field supported by interface filters are split uh, in a separate uh, controls uh, using common sense uh, and saved to the library to reuse them uh, and more efficient you can just add them to new visualizations new dashboards actually uh, and support only uh, one from the library mm, the common filter control config looks quite simple this is index pattern and field name uh, and this is an example of applied filters. That filter will show all fails related to order domain and HTTP calls. We can set model IDs to see all fails uh, for one store or for exact order. Uh, and of course, monitoring. Uh, visualizations. Uh, it will be simply uh, to share your visualization if it is uh, quite understandable, convenient in use, uh, and it has to be uh, easy to use it uh, by non-technical guys. If you are involving more people, you can spend more time with improving its user experience so basic visualizations are quite uh, flexible and simple enough to start without any experience um, a few of my favorite ones so it's a tree map it is convenient to visualize a lot of information at once uh, it may be hard for non-technical guys uh, but it shows uh, a lot of information, really a lot. It shows the exact events grouped by special model ID. And additionally, it uh, visualizes their part in the total amount of events and simultaneously their part in total amount of events per special model. It is interactive and by clicking on its elements, you can apply filters to the whole dashboard. Uh, and the next one is Pi, which was built on the top of uh, log level, then group by event type and domain model. It is less informative, but much more understandable for non-technical guys. Uh, and if you want more, you can use aggregation-based visualizations. Uh, but there is a possibility to touch uh, the sun if you really need Vega syntax of custom visualization is really hot, but it is its light is uh, attracting people like me. Uh, 
So this is an example of the real dashboard built using that syntax. It is possible to squeeze um, almost unlimited amount of information, information using that type of visualization. It is based on a complex aggregation and uh, bears information usual, using both access, uh, circle colors, and their size. Uh, it is hard to build uh, alerts on the top of it, uh, but for people, it is quite uh, convenient. Uh, here are some examples of from official resources. Mm, this is visualization with a few custom charts in one. Uh, the marginal histogram like allows to squeeze much more information into dashboard using colors. And uh, the third uh, example which I want to share, this is geo-based one. So it shows connections and it between airports and it is interactive. Uh, I attached links to um, the official documentation and list of uh, examples. Uh, they are really impressive and there is debug tool attached. So they are really available, but it is really hard to debug them. And there is three syntax type in one file. Uh, you have to check Kibana documentation, Elastic documentation and Vega and Vega Lite syntax. Uh, following the basic rules, such visualization could stay reusable if you are using only basic fields. Uh, exceptional cases, of course, applicable, but uh, they're not, uh, they're limiting usage of the dashboard. And you shouldn't apply extra filters to your visualizations. All filters should be applied to the dashboards. So a bit about alerting, uh, and it uh, is uh, removing needs to permanently check your dashboards, but detect anomalies faster. The first step is to gather information. So we have to create dashboard. Uh, the history visualization is needed for analysis. Uh, and we may adjust uh, thresholds uh, based on historical data, but not point to the sky. Uh, current situation uh, visualization is uh, supposed to be repeat uh, by alert rule. Uh, and of course, thresholds has to be present there the same. So this is a rule. Uh, real rule which uh, has to notify us about uh, big amount of order address validation events. Um, the threshold is 100 of events which was adjusted uh, using historical diagram and we may add not only error rule but warning rule to show uh, the yellow uh, one threshold, so warning level threshold. Um, I recommend you do not rely a lot on the documentation because it's hard to debug uh, rules, uh, but uh, look for examples in the internet uh, and start from them and then apply uh, changes uh, taken from the documentation because documentation is quite controversial and it is really hard to understand which uh, fields could be applicable. Mm. And a few words about testing. Um, as we are working with the legacy code, uh, then obviously unit tests are really hard to implement and mostly time wasting. Uh, I'm proposing to revert the test pyramid, so we'll have less unit tests or do not have them at all, and more functional tests. 
uh, using PHP unit, mm, mm, I am proposing to base our tests on our events, our basement. Uh, it will guarantee us that uh, tests won't be changed uh, by any not changing behavior refactoring. Uh, this is the example of one more decorator, test decorator. It will collect all dispatched events, and in our tests, we'll just check dispatched events, their context, to confirm that business process went in the right direction. Uh, I didn't manage to describe any analytic uh, tools uh, which can be considered as a very valuable business feature, as well as uh, other event driven approaches that could be easily applied on the top of uh, already dispatched events. That approach could be adapted to many special cases, but this is obviously not a seller wallet. Um, and that's it. Uh, so thank you for the listening. <laughs> such a long uh, presentation. Thank you for everyone who was helping me with such approaches and their implementation. And to everyone who was helping with that uh, presentation. So Q and A session. Well, we are waiting for uh, questions. Uh, I'm uh, encouraging everyone to give us feedback. You can still find the link to Volodymyr's uh, feedback form, and also he already posted, uh, wrote in a comment uh, link for Yuri Stock's uh, feedback form. So yeah, please give us feedback. And uh, we are waiting for questions right now. Meanwhile, I have a very important question to you. Uh, what is the right answer? Dark chocolate or milk? Um, <clears throat> I, I guess uh, still dark. <laughs> dark side. <laughs> dark side. So uh, that you you chose you chose dark because previously I said that this is the right answer. Uh, no, no, just just because I like dark. <laughs> okay, this is very good. You are you are really smart person. Uh, I, I I don't know. Did you know that dark chocolate actually counts like a salad? It's not uh, it's not sweet. It's it's very healthy because. If you talk about milk chocolate, it's made from milk. It's fat and and and, and cow and so on. But uh, if you talk about dark chocolate, it's made from cacao beans and cacao beans grow in a on in a tree between uh, leaves and leaves. This is this is salad. Uh, maybe, but coca, you know, could be considered a salad as well. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, dark chocolate is goes like salad. So dark chocolate for you, and uh, and uh, and also uh, Death Club socks, and also Nine Brains boofs, uh, like gray one and uh, oh, it's my uh, my background <laughs> gray yeah, one. That is why I don't use background. Yeah. <laughs> and then also the salmon color one so well we, so thank thank you Vladimir, for comment uh so let's wait a bit more maybe some questions will raise up i will check out meanwhile what's going on with feedback form got some responses but just just few <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Eric uh, is writing here. Per perhaps you can give an overview on how these events can be used to add new functionality in the new code base and how the legacy code base can be phased out. 
Uh, well, actually, mm, it is quite easy to add a new functionality because you are starting from the kind of blank uh, list uh, and there is a lot of uh, event-driven uh, approaches. So uh, it's it really depends on your needs, on your project. And uh, actually, I, I don't know, it's it's quite a wide answer how, how to start doing new features and uh, like, yeah, of course, you can move uh, that uh, Strangler fig uh, implementation uh, and apply it later. So if you have events, uh, you can start intercepting them and build uh, new microservices uh, inside of your monolith, for instance. Uh, and yeah, after some time, uh, you can just start uh, applying them to the legacy system uh, and that's it so redirect your traffic and currently we are doing the same we are dispatching events uh, and we are uh, changing our legacy approach uh, to work from stored events uh, and uh, and then after uh, on the top of that we can build even sourcing we can build uh, like some history attached to some domain models, but uh, even driven approaches are quite complicated and uh, I'm recommending just simplify everything what you see. If you can get rid of some asynchronous processing, it's better to get rid of it because you have to solve related uh, issues uh, with consistency, with availability, That's it, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe if we don't have uh, any questions, yeah, I can I can um, add more details. Uh, mm, how this event can be used to add new functionality in a new code base, uh, and actually for new code base, uh, the approach could be the same. Uh, Your just dispatching them. I uh, like the approach when the domain model is dispatching them. So mm, there is a book, I forgot authors, but uh, it's uh, uh, PHP, domain-driven design, PHP uh, practice or implementation, something like that. So events uh, were created inside of the domain model, applied to that model, to apply changes and then dispatch it from that model. So domain models are dispatching those events. So nobody except the main model can dispatch events and you can keep some data consistency here. But again, if you have a lot of checks, uh, you can face these issues uh, on asynchronous handling. Thank you for comment. Uh, well, it seems that I know we can wait for half a minute, but it seems that there are no more questions. I'm I'm just reminding uh, good people to give us uh, feedback for both uh, uh, for for Yuri's talk and also for Volodymyr, Volodymyr's talk. Uh, I'm just checking out. Uh, we have, yeah, we could have more feedback. Yeah, thank you. Uh, here is Eric writing to you that thank you. Lots of good info. Thank you, Eric, for comment. Yeah, thank you, Eric, for your activity. <laughs> My kids also are hunting me to make some noise. So, but this is, I think, I think all online stuff should be like, uh, by default expected that there will be some kid shouting in the background. And if there is no, then uh, it's like, 
that there should be serious like conversation how how is it that you don't have kids shouting in the background so if your excuse is that you don't have kids you could take some neighbors kids or something so yeah help Kid out rent. kid renting yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah how we how is it uh not uh not not software as a service but kid as a service uh, something like that yeah i will i will use such possibility to <laughs> to give my kids <laughs> help someone uh, yeah, yeah 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 good uh not 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 only the ride sharing but are uh, this uh shout sharing or something like that Okay, uh, seems that there are no more questions. Uh, thank you, Yuri, very much uh, for your investment uh, of work and time. Uh, I hope we will get some more feedback uh, in feedback form maybe a bit later, and then I will later today or tomorrow will will send you results of feedback. And uh, so yeah, thanks to everybody who was uh, watching uh, and. Uh, We'll let you know how it how we gonna what will happen in May. So thanks to everyone. Uh, bye. Thank you. Thank. You.